Damn. What a perplexing start to the story. You know, Hollywood does like to go with narratives and run with certain stories and blow up things more than what they might have been, especially when they're in the unknown. So everything I see in this, I'm taking with a grain of salt, but I'm also taking a lot of notes as well. Welcome back. Welcome back, y'all, to the DeAndre way. We changing up the vibes a little bit. As you know, we always got to keep things a little bit fresh up in here. I appreciate y'all for joining me. We going to jump right into it, y'all. We are going to start with the coverage of the American Sports Story on FX, Aaron Hernandez edition, A.A. Ron, as we call him this man. If you don't know about Aaron Hernandez, then you might have been living under a rock in the last several years or you might be too young for the story or you're not a sports fan you know i love covering the sports shows and movies on here and this one kind of enticed me a few reasons one i watch the nfl i'm a big sports fan but football especially i know all about her and nandez and the things that happens already two they were promoting this show crazy like in crazy in new york they had billboards all over the place prepping for the show and i was reminded like well, i might as well cover the show Get my two cents on it. I mean, I am a sports aficionado, a football savant myself, so I know what's popping and what's really going down. And three, it's a uh, it's a story that has many layers. It's a very deep story. It's a very story. It's a story that I'm sure a lot of people, in some way, shape, or fashion, can resonate with in some type of way. I think, you know, they they covered it a lot. They covered it a lot. They had a Netflix thing on it. I don't believe I watched that. And this is based, like, just talking about the incidents and whatever. And this is a reenactment, you know, of the story about Aaron Hernandez. They love this story. It's crazy. It's crazy. But yes, this eight episode, this eight series arc, it's eight or ten episodes, just released on FX yesterday. Uh, it's coming out every Wednesday, Tuesday night. It comes on late, 10 o'clock. And this first episode, this first two episodes came out. I couldn't finish it last night. It was uh, getting late. I was tired. It didn't end until midnight on the East Coast, so I had to put it to rest up today. But I finished the first two episodes. Um, I would say they were quality. I say they got the message across. Now they're they're definitely pushing Aaron Hernandez and and his side pieces a lot in this. Um, that is seeming to be a focal point of the show. And what everything is basically centered around in his mistreatment by his father, his abuse by his father, his family kind of being very chaotic, you know, his brother being upset with him for not going to, uh, whatchamacallit, UConn, and his mother kind of just being scandalous, <laughs> per se, so... Aaron, Aaron Hernandez, you know, he's no he's no victim in the sense of what he did, the crime he did in killing Odin Lloyd. But he is, a, unfortunately, a victim of a lot of other things in regards to, you know, domestic abuse. Um, he's a, a drugs, being around drugs, a hostile family environment and just not really having a stable home and that's where everything stems from his father being a homophobe and just everything that he really his whole environment was just bad and then the drugs of course the drug dealers his whole environment was lost from the get-go he definitely had no chance whatsoever to make it and it's sad to see because definitely this dude had potential to be a great dude i'm sure but just his surroundings really just crushed him before he even had a chance to get started his mind was already messed up with a lot of things before he had a chance to even think for himself he was told a lot of things and had to follow status quo on a lot of things and he had no say so 
So it was, it was, it was a tough, it's a tough situation overall. I think the story does a decent job of uh, getting the message across and kind of letting us know what's really going down. There's two sides of the story. He's not a victim, but he's also not 100% guilty on everything, everything either. There's some things he are, there's some things he's not. But yeah, it, the thing, so this show basically starts out with him, you know, getting topped off in the car. <laughs> uh, they really push in this, the gay relationship um, with his friend, the quarterback. And now, look, I'd say that's a part of the story, but that is not the story. I think they're making the whole undercover brother settings for him very a focal point when yes it has something to do with the story yes it adds extra layer to it yes it adds a whole aspect to it do i think that's now well according to some reports he killed old Lloyd because he was about to get exposed or he killed himself because he was about to get exposed excuse me uh that could or could not be true. We don't know. But this, this, his, his secret, you know, a lifestyle does have an effect on everything in his life. It does. That could have an effect on him lashing out. But also his father being abusive could have an effect on him lashing out. There's many things. The drugs, the alcohol, there's plenty of things. It's seeming like they're using this as one of the main, the main deterrent, I guess you could say, of him acting some type of way towards others and really being confused when I think that's just one of the many puzzle pieces. Him having to be around these thugs, drug dealers, abusive father, uh, people in his hometown, you know, I think a lot of things contribute to him losing himself in the music completely changing himself essentially um, and it's sad it's very sad in the show, show depicts it but yes he's getting topped off right when we get started so it, it gets crazy I'll be covering the first two episodes too just to be clear I wasn't clear at the beginning of this but yes first two episodes and eh. <laughs> I didn't know they was gonna look, look they dove right into it like Alexander the Alexander documentary or reenactment on Netflix. If you ain't seen my review on that, go check it out. I mean, if you ain't seen it, check it out. But basically started the same way. We see his father, and his father desperately is, you know, not desperately, but very controlling, very dic dictori dicta dictatorial, if that's the word. He wants things his way or the highway, and there's no one talking back to him in his own household. No one gets a second opinion. It's his way. It's his, he's the law and everything. Very toxic. Very toxic. I blame his father for a lot of these things that has happened to him because he pushed up a lot of his views and opinions upon Aaron. And Aaron believed that in the show. And unfortunately, yes, his father passes away very quickly. I believe it was the second episode. Second episode? And, but yes, very toxic. Wants him to go to Yukon, which, <laughs> you know, his father really must be delusional. He'd rather pick it. Yukon over an SEC school, Big 12 school, all these other schools. You're going to sit on Yukon. Yukon football ain't never been good. Not that I can recall. They've never been good. Bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel. I played Yukon in college and they were trash. Even though they did almost beat us, but that ain't, we, we won the game. They not they not good, and yeah, the story does a good job of depicting how his father is just crazy about UConn, wants him to stay in the town, and basically be a hometown hero and be locked up like he is because I believe the father, it seems like he wants Aaron to fly, but he doesn't want him to fly too high. He wants to limit his wings. He wants to seem like he had say so over his power, his 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 abilities. And at the end of the day, whenever he makes it, he's like, oh, that was me. I did that. I told him to go there. I told him to do this. It's all me. So he's the type of dude to probably put the credit on himself. Now, it's unfortunate he died and passed away, but I don't think he would have been a positive influence on Aaron if he had been alive because Aaron probably would have went to UConn against his will. Who knows if he would have made it to the NFL even. So 
like I said, I don't, I'm not happy or anything that his father passed, but it just seems like an omen of what's meant to be, unfortunately, in his case, and a lot of good things that he accomplished probably might not have happened if he was around, and anywho, we continue, uh, so the hot little, look, Aaron, <laughs> this whole show, I guess the first few episodes, Aaron's in high school, dominating the field now the football reenactments i'm never a big fan of these football reenactments because it's just it's very dramatic and very eh, tough to watch they did get some things right i like the dude who plays aaron hernandez very believable good actor just the football mechanics behind movies and whatnot just ain't ever hidden we need to take maybe some friday night light examples because yeah it was it wasn't that good y'all i'm sorry like you're not juking somebody and they're completely flying the other way. Like, at least make it believable to an extent. I mean, I've been on a set ride to be in a football uniform before, and yeah, you got to make things work, but come on now. It was just a little too fake for me for the football part. But anyways, I'm not judging the football part. That's just the side of it. They did use a lot of AI. They used a lot of AI for the back for the crowds in the stands, especially at Florida. Very interesting. And they use clips from the real, the real actual like thing that event that happened. Like they're using real footage from Florida actually playing teams. They, they probably like, look, we ain't got it in the budget to be doing all that extra stuff, getting all the uniforms to the teams. We got two sets of uniforms, the high schools they play and then maybe a college. <laughs> and we only balling on a budget so AI is definitely taking some jobs They're adding some too but uh, scary coach it's scary on that aspect but anyway, anyway, anyway that's just my depiction of the football part you see Aaron in high school he's secretly um, hooking up with dudes and he has a girlfriend ish ish and whatnot. and there's his brother in the mix as well begging him to go to UConn. Now, I think the first, I'll just try and end off the first, top off the first episode. I think the first episode was a good precursor to the series. It kept us enticed and it kept me enticed. I think they did, you know, a good job of really kind of getting, seeing how his mind was messed up, seeing all the directions he was being pulled with the gun as well. He had a taste of that. And they keep bringing back with him holding this gun. They keep bringing that back. Obvious reasons. I think it's a little exaggerated in that aspect. Because at the top, we see him shoot the guy in the car and drive off. That was one of the first things we saw before we saw him getting topped off. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot of foreshadowing. You see a lot of foreshadowing. I think that it's good storytelling in that as in that retrospect of kind of re keep hampering down the point. Like, hey, this is what it is. This is this, this is what it is. This is what it is. But sometimes less is more in that case. And them just seeming like, oh, okay, like this was bound to happen. This was bound to happen. Eh, there's plenty of guys with guns that don't ever end up killing anyone. You know? It's just because they're around it a lot it doesn't mean it's bound to happen i think that they're overblowing the gun thing just a little bit and him just looking at it and pointing it out and whatnot and i'm just like you guys come on now like you're making it just a little too like obvious about what you're trying to do that's just me though but yes he is around those bad dudes and whatnot he's not the best high school student getting in trouble getting in fights gets some tattoos mother parents or whatever really his mother's kind of just whatever in his life he's close with his other family i think it's i believe it's his aunt or his cousin he goes to stay with after his mom does some infidelity well i guess she can't be infidelity if her husband is dead excuse me and i think the depiction of the family matters is very more is a lot bigger dynamic than we got to see they kind of brushed over the fact of what his mother did to his aunt's and I believe that was his dad's side, so she had no like immediate relation, but I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see actually what was going down and how this happened. 
it completely went through that. Now, maybe they'll get to it in the next episode, but we missed that. I think that was something that we could have hit more than these love scenes with this quarterback. You know, I, I think it was more, I think their relationship, to be honest, was obviously confused. Boys messing around, you know, experimenting, of course. We all grew up. Not that we all did that, but I think they're just, they're pushing into that heavily. You know, the dude did come out and say, yeah, we were pretty much dating like the whole of high school. Take everything with a grain of salt. Maybe he's saying that for Cloud. Maybe he's saying that to be in the news. Who knows? He said that to be in the news. Who knows? But I think there's more layers than just that that they're pointing at. And I think they hopefully will focus more on these other things in the episodes to come. Do I think they will do that? No, I think this will be a revolving door of him, you know, even in the end of the second episode, he was in the car with the dude and he was nervous and ended up driving off. So he knows what he's doing. He knows what the metrics of things are at that point. Especially, you know, we get older, 17, 18, you understand what's going on. You're, you're, we're not, you understand what's going on. And I think they did a good job, actually, too, of kind of realizing he knew what was going on. And it wasn't just like, oh, I just, I don't know what happened. No, he, he's fully in control and fully seen what's happened, what, what was going down. And, yeah, throughout the first and ep second episodes, you know, he's getting through high school, gets recruited through Florida. I think they did a good job of actually doing uh, 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 Urban Meyer. He looks just like him. Uh, talk, did a, the guy who's playing Urban Meyer is doing a good job. I will give him that. Urban Meyer was a coach where everything was going down at Florida, and he seemed to just kind of let people off the loose, off the hook. That was kind of the first when I started watching college football for the first time when Florida was winning. And yeah, I mean the team was running rampant, but he held a you know he held a tight ship and actually came down on some of the players finally. I think it's funny that they're really focusing on this Cam Newton storyline as well. I hope I want to listen to Cam Newton's podcast and see what he has to say about it. It's pretty funny. I thought I was waiting to see the laptop thrown out the window. But it's interesting how they're getting so in depth about these other things that are very public knowledge, which eh, don't really affect the story in the immediate sense. It's not about Aaron, it's about Cam and whatnot. And then Tim Tebow just a little bit as well. But they really focus in on Cam Newton, like Cam Newton's character a lot. And if you don't know, Cam Newton got just that that stuff did happen. Uh, he did throw apparently a laptop out the window, which I was waiting to see, but that didn't happen. And he did get kicked off the team. I wonder if it happened in that fashion. I wonder if Urban Meyer had anything to do with this series as well. But yeah, it was very, very interesting. And I'm very interested to see your Cam's point of view on the whole situation revolving the show specifically. And if he talks about it, it's not the brightest moment in his career, but it's definitely funny that they keep they brought this up a lot in Cam Newton's character. And there were so many other really great players in the team and so many other things going on. That Florida team was going crazy, y'all. Especially before, that was before social media too. So they really was doing some craziness out in them streets. And I'm sure they went to Florida and talked to some of the people. Like, what happened? What this? About that? About this? About that? Police too, so... It was it was definitely going crazy. Now that wouldn't have flew in today's age, of course, with everyone having a camera, a cell phone, and whatnot. But definitely it was some wild times. The good days before social media, and you can do things and get away with it. Now you can't do nothing to get away with it. But yeah, the Cam Newton storyline was very funny. I, I always kept, they had me laughing. I think they're over depicting what locker rooms are like. Yes, locker rooms can be a little obnoxious. You're talking to someone who did play college, D1 college football, so I was around it. Yes, they can be horsing around moments where you do have times where people are just being very juvenile and boisterous and... Gay acting, I guess you could say. Like, not gay acting, but like... Doing gay things. Like, you know, dicks flying around and ass showing all over the, all over the place, you know? This is FX. And they, they over-exaggerated the game. You know, dramatization, you gotta add the drama, I guess. But just, but they, to keep it realistic, tone it down just a notch. Um, <laughs> I don't think people are, there was a scene in the locker room where this dude was about to touch another dude's dick, and that's not really what be going down, coach. Not, not, not in my locker rooms. Like, we're not making bears and vets and everyone's watching like that. That's kind of weird. Shower is dark in there. 
I, I don't even think in there, coach. Like people will do some horse play and stuff like that, but that, they were doing a little more than horse play. <laughs> they were just pushing agendas, and it's just like, bro, like, come on now. It was just a lot. It was just a lot. But that's you know, it's a TV show. At the end of the day, they gotta they gotta keep the casual audience intertwined somehow, and that's definitely gonna keep people intertwined. But yes, just just. It was funny that they were over exaggerating a lot of the locker room stuff and whatnot. And they seem like Aaron is just such a short tempered dude to where he's about to fight every single person he comes across and says anything to him. Who knows? But I don't think this dude could have been that short tempered. It was crazy, you know? I mean, every two seconds it looked like he was about to get, in, get into it with somebody. But yes, they depict him getting into doing that and getting into drugs more so and smoking and all these other things. Getting in trouble, bad grades. He's on a tight leash, and eventually, you know, he gets suspended for one game against in the next season, not even the current season, against uh, Hawaii. Pointless game. They would probably blow, win that game by like 50 points. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything major that went on episode one and two. Um, I think the quality was fine. The story was interesting. Like they did, they did an interesting job on telling, keeping the story afloat and whatnot. I just hope they just tone down the overdramatization of things just a little bit, just a little, keep things a little realistic, just a little bit, y'all, just a little bit. More so, curious about the whole when he gets to the NFL part and how they're gonna portray that. But yeah, I think the dude playing Aaron Hernandez is doing good. Obviously, played Billy Donovan doing good. Um, and this story kind of has told itself from the very beginning, so it's kind of just showing the details in between. We know what happens, but we're just seeing how everything goes down. Ah, you know, there's a lot more to dive into. We won't go too crazy tonight since this is a series. I'd say the first two episodes, I'd say... I'm going to put them together just because they seem like one package. I'll give it a seven. Seven. But not the amazingest. Not very, but kept me interested enough to want to keep watching. And I'm definitely curious on how they're going to depict this whole, well, obviously the Odin Lloyd part, but the New England Patriots part to make it seem like if they're horsing around a locker room because NFL locker rooms are not like college locker rooms. So if they start really going crazy, then I think with that, then this show is gonna might hit a halt just because there's NFL players that will speak out against this. As well as college players, but NFL players that have platforms that were in the locker rooms with Aaron Hernandez that Hernandez that will say something about this if they act crazy. And I'm interested to see who they'll have play Tom Brady to. That'll be funny. But yeah, y'all, that was my review and recap of episode one of the American Sports Story. I mean, Aaron Hernandez, check it out, coming out every Tuesday on FX. And we'll be on to episode three next. So tell me what y'all think. Did you like the first episode? Did you not like it? We all know the story. Did you think that they did a good job in telling this part? Did you think that they didn't do a good job? I want to hear your thoughts. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And until next time, y'all, we out here. Peace, blessings, deuces. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Peace and blessings. <laughs>